Hello, my name is Matt Max. Last time we talked about really, really simple logic gates, namely AND and OR, okay? AND the bullet thing, that's only true when both inputs are true, and OR, the federation badge, that is true when at least one input is true. This time I want to talk about a little bit more complex logic gates that are also a little bit more interesting in my opinion. Now, first one I want to show you is this right here. What do we have here? Now, we have 5 volt going into a resistor and then going to the LED. At the same time to the collector of our transistor and then the transistor goes to ground. Okay, so 5 volt goes like this into the transistor and into the LED at the same time and then through the transistor into ground. What is this shit? Why would I care? Obviously, if you look at this, right, and if you wouldn't know anything about transistors, you would think, okay, you know, sure, the LED will be on the whole time because it gets current the whole time, and it doesn't actually matter whether or not I close this switch, I trigger this transistor or not, right? That is what you might think. So let's actually look at it. All right, so you see the LED is in fact on, right? We have five volts to our switch, from our switch through a 10K resistor into our, into our transistor. And then we have a one kilo ohm resistor in front of our LED. And then the LED is connected to ground. And at the same time, the one kilo ohm resistor is connected to our transistor. So, the first impulse when you see that is the LED will be on no matter what. So let's press the switch. What the hell is happening here? When I press the switch, the LED goes off. What? Why? Here is the reason why. Electricity is lazy. Electricity is always going the way of the least resistance, okay? So we have 1k here, we have 10k here. But that doesn't matter for... That doesn't matter for what's happening here. What matters is that this LED right here actually has a resistor built in. Okay? I told you to buy LEDs with a built-in resistor. So this resistor inside of the LED is about one kilo ohm, okay? So if the current goes this way and out through the, out through the LED, what we get is two kilo ohm total, uh, total um, resistance in this way, okay? So, the blue line is 2 kilo ohm total resistance. The green line is also about 2 kilo ohm total resistance. As long as the transistor is not triggered, the green line is also about 2 kilo ohm resistance. Since electricity is going the way of the least resistance, that means that as much current is going this way, or as much voltage is going this way, as it's going this way. All right? Now, a curious thing happens once we actually trigger the transistor. Once we trigger the transistor, suddenly the resistance of this is only one kilo ohm, because if we trigger the transistor, the transistor has almost no resistance anymore. So suddenly, it's better, it's easier for the electricity to go through the resistor out through uh, to ground instead of going through the LED. So once we trigger the transistor, instead of going the blue and the green line, like it usually does, because the resistance is the same, as soon as we trigger the transistor, because this resistance is now less than the blue resistance, it does no longer actually go through the LED. This thing is called an inverter. Okay, or a NOT gate. This is a NOT gate. And the reason is, is that it's always the opposite of the input. When the input is true, the output is false. When the input is false, the output is true. It's always the exact opposite. We can make a truth table, although the truth table will be quite simple. So we have only input A and we have output 
When input A is true, output is false. When input A is false, output is true. Not gate. So the way you write a not gate is a little triangle with a little sphere. Sphere always means not, okay? Sphere always means not. Now, this is really, 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 really cool. Because now we can actually combine this we can combine this with what we talked about last time, which is our AND and OR gate. And we can just put our inverter behind our AND and OR gate to invert the results of our AND and of our OR gate. And what we get when we invert the results of AND and OR is we get a NOT AND and a NOT OR gate. The NOT AND gate is written like this, NAND. And is a symbol for the not end gate. Looks like the symbol for the on end gate, like a bullet. But it has a little circle in the front. The circle means not, not end. So let's actually go ahead and really quickly build this. All right. So this is the circuit diagram for our not end gate. It's very, very similar. It's basically exactly the same as a circuit diagram, although now it's really difficult to see for the inverter. You see the inverter has one transistor right here. And all I did was to add another transistor after this. Okay. So now it's a not AND gate. Okay. Now it's an inverted AND gate. Now, this is one way to do a not AND gate. What you could also do is you could just do an AND gate and put this after it. But then you would need three resistors, uh, transistors. This way you only need two. And I have it right here. Okay, it's exactly the same as the inverter, just with another switch and a second transistor. And as you can see, if I press one switch, it's true. If I press the B switch, it's true. Only if I press both switches, it's false. So let's actually make the truest table. A, B, Output, when both are false, output is true. When one is true, output is true. Only when both are true, output is false. So it is the exact opposite. It is the exact opposite of our AND gate. It is the exact opposite of our AND gate. Awesome, so now we have not and nand. Next thing we have to do is not or nor. Now the symbol for nor, I probably figured this out by now, is the federation batch with circle at the front. That's not or. And the truth table, you can probably figure that out too. It's the exact opposite of this one. So When both inputs are false, only then it's true. As soon as one input is true, at least one input is true, the output is false. That's a not or gate. Now, now I will actually build that because there's a really cool way to build it with only one transistor. Now, the reason you can build it with only one transistor is because as you can see, as soon as one input is true, the output is false. It doesn't matter which input is true. And what this means is that we can use the same circuit we used for our inverter and just put two switches in front of it. Now we have two inputs, only one transistor, and we get exactly this behavior. Only if no switch is pressed do we get a true signal. As soon as one Switch is pressed, the transistor is true, that means that the current is going this way. I don't feel that I actually have to build this because it's quite simple. But let's do it anyway because it's quick and easy. So we just remove one transistor. And there we go. That's our NOR gate. As soon as at least one switch is pressed or both switches are pressed, the output is false. So that's really, really, really cool.
little thing. Now, this is where we end using transistors and where we start using integrated circuits. This is an integrated circuit. You see it has, in this case, 14 lags. And all this is, all this is, is four of those. In here, in this little thing, I have four not and gates. That's all there is. And from now on, we're only going to use this little thingy. And the reason is that we already know, we already know how to build a not and gate. We already know how to build this. So there's no reason for us to do all of this and all of this cabling and stuff when instead we can just use one of those. Now, to actually use one of those, we have to understand which pin is what. And to do that, you just Google 4011 and then you see what it's all about. But let me actually show you. So, first thing you have to notice, and you can probably not see it, but if I get more light, I actually cannot. But if you could see it, there's a little notch in one side. This notch is there so you know the up side, okay? So, if you put it like this, here is what you get. All the A's and B's are inputs. Q's are the outputs. The number tells you which output belongs to which input. So A1 and B1 are inputs for Q1. B2 and A2 are inputs for Q2 and so on. Then you have VDD and VSS. VDD is plus 5 to 10 volts and VSS is ground. That is all there is to this little thing. And from now on, we're going to use this little nice thing to do all kinds of really, 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 really cool stuff. One of those allows us to build a lot of cool shit, including, including memory. My name is B. Max. Thanks for watching this episode. And till next time.